Racing takes place on Friday, the 12th of January, 2024. We are racing at Fairview and we've got uh, a tough uh, meeting to look forward to. Eight races on the program and the feature on the day will be the Ladies Bracelet, which is a listed event and they race for a gross stake of 150,000 Rand. Joining me on the line is Grant Paddock. And uh, Grant, how are you doing? How's everything going uh, your side? Morning, Rahil. Morning, Punches. Yeah, all good down this side. We've had a bit of weather. The rain came through last night, washed out the cricket. But um, beautiful day today. Hopefully it will be okay for tomorrow on the grass. Uh, but it will be a greasy track. There's no doubt about that. Race number one will be the start of the bar pot. And this is a 2,400 meter race that will get the day underway. It is an open maiden as well. 12.45 will be the off time. And uh, Candice Bass Robinson comes to town with um, I'm a hot tip or... Imatep, however they pronounce it. Uh, now this individual has got 56 and a half kgs on the back, trying the trip for the first time. He the, he's the one that tops the boards. In your opinion, is he the one to beat? Yeah, 100%. Rahel, um, definitely the right horse, very well bred uh, horse versus Jeterix uh, Colt. Um, probably found the right kind of a race. Um, drawn out at 10, but I don't think that's going to be a concern. Um, as long as he gets the trip, it's his most important because um, the likes of Wolfram and definitely Military Man are, are, are two solid horses that will definitely get a 2400 meter trip. The Cape Town horse has got the right form, but I must be honest with you, his, his last um, four runs, he's been 42 on. 33 to 1, 10 to 1, and 33 to 1, uh, and now his favourite. So, um, listen, it, he's no good thing. He, sh he should win it, but he's no good thing. And his dangers are definitely Wolfram and Military Man, and those three should be the first three home. Yeah, number one, Wolfram and Military Man, both are around 7 to 2 in the market, so possibly a good two horses that you can look for cover if you aren't in the camp of horse number four. We move along to race number two on the day, which is the maiden plate over 1,400 metres, 20 past 1 is the off time and uh, the place accumulator will get underway here when we have a look at uh, the fixed odds betting market bridgerton is the favorite even money favorite it's kitty mo at nine to two western jack 11 to two williams legacy at seven to one along with montreal and then it's ten to one and better bar those now this horse bridgerton he's been costly to follow 12 starts in the maiden ranks and uh, he's had four seconds would he be the one to uh, possibly get it right in this contest but um, I think there could be a few dangers. Yeah, Rahil, listen, he, he, he's come to the races. His last two starts and got scratched for um, various reasons. So I'm um, a little bit hesitant on Bridgerton. He hasn't run since November. Uh, last year, the 17th, um, I don't think he's an even money shot. I must be very honest with you. I think the, the Michelin Yard hold a really strong hand with Williams Legacy and Kitty Moia, and I'm going for those two to run first and second, then maybe um, Bridgerton and Western Jack. But I think it lies with the Michelin Yard in this race, and I, I've got a preference for Williams Legacy. Uh, he'll, I know he's putting up very decent work at home and um, should be a very big runner. Ground this horse, uh, Montreal, obviously last time out, uh, first run for, for Kelly and uh, she was all the rage on the day. I think we did the show together and we thought that she'd win, but uh, just a poor performance and she just faded badly. I see you reported examined nil, but uh, anything come up in the wash on, on your end? Um, Rahil, listen, she, she over-raced uh, before the race, she over-raced in the parade ring, she over-raced behind the pens and jumped and bowled and fell in a hole. Put a line through it, um, I know they're going to try and give her a chance in this race and give, let her run on, but she's got to show some improvement, uh, that last run was just too bad. Yeah, maybe she's one to keep an eye on and hoping for some improvement from horse number nine, Montreal. Moving along to race number three, 1,400 meters the trip. This is an MR72 handicap. 13.55 is the off time. It's also the start of the pick six. And uh, your fixed odds betting market has got horse number six, Gunsmoke, at the top, narrowly ahead of UB Seeker. It's 33 to 10 and 7 to 2 about the pair. 4 to 1 about Travel Master. 7 to 1, Cruzador. And then it's 8 to 1 and better bar those. Now, uh... UB Seeker, you were strong in his uh, in his camp last time out, and he just found one too good on the day. Now going 1,400 meters, could that uh, play into his hands? 100%. I've got no question mark that uh, 1,400 is uh, going to not suit him. He, uh, he will be probably ready for this kind of a race. Um, definitely the horse to beat in a very shallow field. Gunsmoke's coming back from a layoff, and uh, I listened to um, Tara's pre-race 
his comments and uh, might just just need a run, but he's got solid form. He can't be left out of the exotic Swahil. He's got to go in. Travel master for me seems to be a better horse on the poly, and and then the other the other lang horse Pedro is also going to be a, he's also a decent runner. There's no doubt about that. That four links to Global Alley and Global Alley is a really really smart horse. That was good enough to be competitive here, but I think also Ubi Seeker should win this race. Yeah, Ubi Seeker is uh, at around 7 to 2 in the market and uh, Grant in his camp once again from a 2 draw with Samanga Kamalo aboard. Moving along to race number 4, 1400 meters. This is an MR86 handicap. Half post 2 is the off time. It is also the start of Jackpot 1 and it, it does look to be quite a competitive contest for race number 4. Sundays 33 to 10, 6 to 1 about Slings and Arrow, 7 to 1 about A of Yellow Yo Cool. It's uh, 8 to 1 about Dowser and then it's 10 to 1. And better bar those. Now, Sunday's number four, he's uh, obviously got a deep draw to contend with, but he's got some solid form to his name despite his, uh, his last two starts, which have been uh, a bit below par. Uh, listen, I, I wouldn't say they are below par three lengths and four lengths off in Cape Town in season. He's, he's more than good enough to win a race in Port Elizabeth, there's no doubt. Um, slings and arrows, and this was Dowser also, two uh, horses that are holding solid form. Dowser's having his third run here. He's, he's maybe in my narrow first pick. He's going he's gonna to be a big runner, unfortunately, drawn out wide. Um, but Louis knows how to get them over from those draws. I think the race is between those three horses, the two, the four, and the five. And um, I don't think there's any spooks in this one. The winner will come from those three. Um, the 12 horse, Aya Jaffa Jocko, that's just pro coming back from a bit of a break. I see it pulled up, not striding out last time out, but loves the course and distance. And the wet going is definitely going to suit that one with, with Yeni up, maybe back ends of quartets and, and, and in bigger uh, pick sixes. But I think the winner will come from either uh, two, four, or five. Two, four, five horses that uh, you can include into race number four, and just narrow your selections down to those three runners, and uh, could be uh, Grant could be onto something with those three runners, and uh, he could get away nicely there in race four. Moving along to race number five, a Phillies and Mayor 72 handicap over the 1200 meter trip, five past three is the off time. Your favorite is uh, Pomodoro Magic, a weak favorite at five to one, Executor at 11 to two, Angel C seven to one, along with the Kill Money Vague. And then it's 8-1 to one and better bar those. Now, Pomodoro Magic, she's holding her form quite nicely. Last time out, she met Stronger, taking on the boys. Back against uh, Same Sex Company, despite the 61. She's uh, a filly that um, sets quite a decent standard here, Grant. 100% Rahil, definitely the horse to beat in this race. She's actually my best bet on the card. A very, very good run at the 82 level against the boys last time out to the Winter Lake in a, in a trip that's a furlong too short for her. She's back over the 12. She's back against the Phillies. And uh, I tell you what, this is a lovely filly. This. She doesn't know how to run a bad race. She'll be very, very hard to beat, there's no doubt. The, her main danger, number 11, Kilmoney Vague. Uh, she'll probably chase her home. In the place accumulator, you can either bank a Pomodoro if you want to cover, cover with Kilmoney Vague. And then the likes of maybe Angel C, uh, and then the, the one horse, um, Ella's Delight, ran a very uh, good race last time out. But um, I'm very, very strong on Pomodoro's Magic, and I think it's good value at your current price. Yeah, Grant, I think that's brilliant, brilliant value at 5 to 1, especially considering you say that she's your best bet. And uh, if she happens to come home, well, we've got Grant Paddock to thank for that. He's given us some confidence with the horse number two, Pomodoro Magic, 5 to 1, and uh, could certainly be worth a nice bet at that current price. Moving along to race number six, 1600 meters, the Phillies and Mayors, 66 handicap, 15.35 is the off time. It's a field of 10 runners that will line up for this contest. Favorite for all we know, a 3 to 1 trip to Barberton is at 9 to 2. It's 11 to 2 about get it done, and then it's 6 to 1. And better bar those. Now, for all we know, ran a good second last time out behind Meta, who looked to be a standout in that field. She jumps from gate number two, and she should have every opportunity now stepping up in trip to 1600 meters. But this horse trip to Barberton, I think it's a huge positive that they are bringing her back in trip to 1600 meters. Last time out against the boys, she was beaten under a length, but she's got fitness on her side, and I think she could, uh, she could just get the job done in this uh, contest on the turf over 1600 meters. Um, Rahil definitely got a decent 
chance. She ran seven days ago, so we've got to see how she uh, pulls up and everything. But it was a good run to Woodland Ridge. That was a very, very shallow field, that I must tell you, a very shallow field. Tricky kind of a race. I don't like this race at all. For all we know, the favourite, you know, she's going a mile for the first time. Met, the run to Meta, the length of Meta, that's, that's definitely good enough to win a race like this. She's carrying 61 kilos on a sticky track with a two draw. She could get found out. I like a bit of this horse, get it done from Sharon Cossignard, who's now back in form and doing very well and well done to them with Louis up. So that's definitely a run. And Bo Color ran a very good race uh, last week, uh, a length and a half to United Express. Very tricky race. A real person needs to go wide. And this, this other filly, a Maiden's Cove, ran a very good run last week as well. I don't know if it's a, maybe a little bit too soon. She was 1.6 off United Express. So there's a couple of fillies that need to go in. Uh, very tricky race. The punters need to go wide. You're probably going to be needing all of the two four we know four get it done five bow color seven trip to Barden, and eight maidens cove nothing really strong here and you're going to just need a lot of luck to get through the exotics yeah race number six granted just uh go for a bit of cover in the sixth race on the program you could get a good result that could suit you quite nicely in those exotics we move along to race number seven which is the feature on the day quarter past for the off time 1600 meters a trip this is the ladies bracelet a listed event and we've got uh Gold poker game that comes to town for Candace Bass Robinson, a four-time winner from 13 starts. We've got And We Dance, Sister Light from now with Gavin Smith. There's um, quite a few nice fillies here. And we've even got uh, Luna Halo, who's a five-time winner from eight starts. And uh, her last two starts down in the Western Cape, she's taken on a lot stronger company and um, beaten behind Beach Bomb last time out in the Phillies Guineas. And we've seen that form... Uh, Done very well this past weekend. She's a favorite at 2 to 1, 28 to 10 about uh, gold poker game, 5 to 1, and we dance, and it's 10 to 1 and better bar those. Luna Halo, the one to beat, Grant? Um, I'm with the older horse, gold poker game. Um, very hard to beat, I think. A very good run to Sarki last time out. Probably prepping for this this race. Very strong form line. Uh, good draw, stable uh, raids. Very, very well. I make it a boat race between her and Luna Halo. The three-old, you know, she ran five lengths to now a, a dual grade one winner in Beach Bomb. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. But um, gold poker game is going to be a hard nut to crack. If we're looking for another uh, horse that you're going to have to add in, but probably add and we don't, she doesn't know how to run a bad race. But I think the winner will come from either 1 or 13 and maybe 2 for a little bit of cover in the pick 6. I really do like gold poker game to take a lot of beating here. Yeah. Gold poker game at around 28 to 10 in the market for the Candice Bass Robinson Yard. And uh, Drakenstein start Gareth Wright will be riding that individual. Race number 8, the final race on the day, 16.45 is the off time. Captain TikTok, 9 to 2, 5 to 1 about Coastal Path. One win tonight is at 11 to 2. It's 7 to 1 about a day, then it's 8 to 1 and better bar those. Now, Grant, having a look at race number 8, obviously, if UB Seeker happens to come through and uh, win in the earlier race, that will do uh, the form line of Captain TikTok a world of good, who won at a bit of a price last time out. And I must be honest, he didn't have the best of form heading into the race. But uh, do you think he could follow up or how, uh, how are you uh, reading into the race number 8? Yeah, Captain TikTok absolutely killed me last time I was on Uber Seeker for my life. I really, really do like this horse, number seven, Nadea. I think he's the wrong price. I think he'll take a power of beating back to a five furlong. Uh, he was in a 12 last time. I, they caught him on the line. Um, Louis up down the straight 14 draw not a problem massive massive runner at the wrong price and he should he probably should be favored in the race captain tiktok last time out 33 to 1 and he won um you know is he going to go back to back i'm not 100 percent sure but gavin smith definitely holds the aces in this field then the source number 10 for he's definitely the improver he's having his third and uh, third run after a long long break he's come on with each and every run and he's a horse that can definitely run into quartets and and, and trifectas um um, and beyond that, it becomes a bit of a lottery. But uh, I'm very, very strong on a day here. I think he's a very, very good value. Yeah, as we know, with the eighth race in uh, PE on a Friday, it's generally a very, very tough race. But uh, Grant finding us some value with horse number seven a day at around seven to one in the market. Loom Kotua takes a ride for Gavin Smith, and he ran a cracking second last time out uh, behind great times on the poly track. That was over 12. Now dropping in trip to a five furlongs and uh, Grant uh, suggests that he could possibly get the job done at 7-1. to one. We're going to move along to the suggested bet now and Grant will take us through his suggested bet for racing out at uh, Fairview on Friday. Grant, take it away with uh, your suggested bet. 
Thank you very much, Rahil. My best bet, Pomodoro Magic in race five, number two. My value bet, race eight, number seven, Adaya. And my suggested bet, the place accumulator goes as follows. We start off with six and ten, by six, eight and ten, by two and five, by banker two, by two and four, by one and thirteen, by banker seven for 48 rand. That's Grant Paddock's uh, place accumulator, and he's given us some, some nice value on the day. Pomodoro Magic, best bet at 5 to 1 a day, a value bet at 7 to 1. Could be worth a nice double in the region of around 47 to 1 on Hollywood bets if you are having a look at the fixed uh, odds double there. Grant, thanks very much for your time. All the best, and uh, enjoy racing on Friday. Have a wonderful weekend. Thank you very much, Rahil, and good luck to the punters tomorrow. Goodbye. Thanks very much to Grant. All the best to you as uh, the Panther would race in out at Fairview on Friday. Hopefully it's a profitable day's racing.